Welcome to Airbus. Hello and welcome to the We Make It Fly Airbus podcast. In this series, we're focusing on all that matters in space, defense, and security. My name is Elizabeth Duffy, and I'm the product marketing specialist of Up42. And here with me today is Up42's chief product officer, Sean Feed. We're here today to discuss what is the role of geospatial technology platforms in a fast evolving industry, especially in the complex economic landscape that we see today. Sean Veed has worked in geospatial tech for over 20 years with behemoths like Here Technologies and has also worked with innovative startups like CMAP and now obviously Up42. I'm very excited to have you here with me today, Sean. Thanks for joining. Hi, Lizzie. Thank you for having me. I think now I'd like to get an overview for our listeners on what Up42 is exactly. On the Up42 website, it's described as a developer platform and marketplace. Could you explain to the listeners what exactly that means and what Up42 does? Sure. Uh, so Up42 is a 100% uh, owned subsidiary of Airbus Defense and Space. Uh, we were incubated by BCG Digital Ventures uh, in late 2018, early 2019. And we launched our company in May 2019. Uh, we are currently 45 people uh, from 21 different countries and we're based in Berlin in Germany. So. What does Up42 do? As you said, Up42 describes itself as a developer platform and a marketplace. And uh, this is tied to the two core things that we do. So on the one hand, we're a developer platform because our core audience are developers. We really want to make sure that it's easier for people to build solutions based on geospatial data and analytics. So we really focus our product uh, and our entire offering towards developers. The other place, uh, the other part of that is, is around the marketplace. And uh, we are a marketplace in that we, uh, we create relationships with data providers and analytics providers and provide their technology to our developers and to people using Up42. Uh, and on, on that basis, we're able to share revenue from our customers to our partners. So uh, really op operating as an open marketplace from that perspective. So Up42 was born uh, from the realization that there's a large untapped market for geospatial data and applications. Um, and essentially that there are so many barriers to entry right now that's stopping smaller companies from getting involved. And this is why Airbus decided to create Up42 as a separate independent startup to basically tackle this challenge. Yeah, that's great. Already a lot of background info for our listeners. So I think we can go ahead and get right into the thick of it then. Given Up42's broad offering, what do you see as some of the main challenges currently facing the industry? You know, some of these barriers to entry that you mentioned, maybe, I don't know, two or three examples and how Up42 addresses them. Sure. So uh, there are three key challenges that Up42 is addressing directly, and these are uh, data processing and analytics or algorithms and analytics and computing infrastructure. So on the one hand, there's a lot of data that exists out there right now, whether it's satellite imagery or geospatial data or even IoT data, but it's very fragmented. The, the whole data ecosystem is fragmented. It's, it's hard as a startup to find the right data source to technically integrate it into your product and also then to, to create the necessary commercial relationships to be able to use that data. So there's real barriers to entry there. Uh, at the moment, what Up42 is doing is creating a, a relationships with data providers. We're making that data available on our platform and people can access and use it, pay for only what they need. Um, and we currently already have more than 25 data sources on our platform, including satellite imagery, uh, or optical and radar satellite imagery, commercial data like Spot and Pleiades, um, open source data from uh, the Copernicus program, so all of the Sentinel uh, data sources. Um, and we're also bringing brand new kinds of data onto the platform, for example, aerial imagery, uh, AIS, um, weather data, etc. So really expanding the kinds of data that we have available. The second part of this, as I mentioned already, is around processing algorithms. And processing algorithms are hard to build. Um, whether it's remote sensing or image processing algorithms, which require deep specialist knowledge to be able to build those, uh, or whether it's around specifically trained machine learning algorithms uh, that are built to, to fulfill a specific purpose. Uh, for example, detect and classify 
aircraft and satellite imagery, these are hard to build and take a very specific set of skills. So what we're trying to do is to bring these processing algorithms in from the markets, from our partners, make them available on our marketplace in an easy to use way and just allow people to, to use them uh, immediately. Uh, and this is something where uh, we're, we're really making good progress on, on, on the marketplace and on the developer offering side. Right now, we have more than 50 algorithms on our marketplace, and these range from very simple data preparation tasks uh, like filtering or, or, or tiling um, through to uh, indices or statistical analysis like uh, NDVI uh, or other kinds of, of, of vegetation indices all the way through to machine learning algorithms, which are, uh, which are things that are then detecting cars, detecting change, detecting and classifying aircraft, et cetera. So these are the three main kinds of algorithms we have on the platform. The third one is around the infrastructure. And on the infrastructure side, uh, essentially it's what we, what we like to call invisible infrastructure. Uh, you know, you can process data at scale on UP42 without needing to worry at all about the infrastructure, which ramps up and down automatically in the background. And, and this is otherwise relatively difficult to do yourself. Uh, of course, cloud infrastructure is easily available nowadays, but to build a cloud infrastructure that can efficiently process huge amounts of geospatial data uh, is, is hard. So these are the three problems that UP42 solves, data, processing, and scalable infrastructure. I think that's really clear. So the marketplace is serving as a collection bin where all of this data and algorithms are being aggregated for customers. And then the infrastructure is used to scale the customer's projects. Bringing on algorithms, in my view, seems straightforward enough as a uh, geospatial analyst myself, but the data sources, not so much. And it seems that Up42 is reliant on many data providers. So I'm interested, what sorts of technology do you think is needed from them, the data providers, to be as efficient as possible as a marketplace? There's two sides to it. The one is the technology side, but there, there's also more some, uh, some things on the business side that we need as well. So let's start with the technology side. Uh, we made a fundamental choice as Up42 that we were going to only bring in data on demand and not duplicate any of the, the, the data sources that exist out there. For the simple reason that there's so much data and there will be so much data in the future that we do not believe is economically feasible to operate a marketplace that duplicates data. So the number one thing we need from our data providers is a API-based platform where we can bring the data in on demand, where we can search for the data, where we can place an order, where we can download the data, access the data, and make it available for, for our developers. Um, and in many cases, this is working quite fine. Uh, uh, but in some cases, particularly with some of the data sources that are available um, for, for some years in the market already, they haven't got that data platform in place. And then there's extra work for us to do to make it look like they do. Um, so that would be our number one request to data providers is, you know, take API seriously, uh, take your data platform seriously, put developers at the center of, uh, of your product offering and make sure that you're able to access data easily via those APIs. On the business side, uh, of course, a lot of, a lot of data providers have legacy business models and legacy revenue to protect um, existing reseller agreements, sometimes exclusive relationships, etc. And navigating those while trying to build an open marketplace is sometimes quite tricky. Uh, so what we really need from data providers is, is a little bit of an open mind to, to work in new ways, to test new business models, uh, and, and to test new ways of distributing their products. I'm interested, although the question that I just asked was related more to the first component, the data. I'm interested also in the other two components that you mentioned, so the algorithms and the infrastructure. Why is scalable infrastructure, processing, automation, machine learning, all of these hot topics, so important for the mass adoption of Earth observation data? There's a very, very simple reason for that, Lizzie, and it's just because there is so much data, it's not possible to get all the value out of that data in any other way. Uh, there was an article on Geomatics World published last year, which, uh, which suggested that it would require around 8 million people doing nothing but looking at satellite imagery 24 seven, just to ensure that every photo is, is actually seen by someone, let alone actually analyzed. Now, if you think about that, that is, that is huge. And, and we know how many new constellations are being launched. We know how many new data sources there are going to be in the future. There is no possible way as an industry that we can extract data, uh, extract value from these data sets if we're not taking full advantage of automation. 
and we're not taking full advantage of the advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence and machine vision, etc. Um, these technologies, uh, including, of course, uh, scalable cloud computing, are fundamental for us to be able to realize the full value of those data sets. So what role then do you see emerging companies and product developers playing in embracing these geospatial technologies and, and making it available for wider adoption? You know, I, I think there's, there's, there's a couple of things to this. Uh, one thing that I learned very early on in my career is that there's a use for geospatial data in almost every industry and almost every use case. Uh, the challenge is that is that if you're a, a core technology provider um, providing either the data or some core analytics or a platform such as Up42, you're not going to be the one who's solving all of those end user problems uh, using geospatial data. So I think the real value and the real role that emerging companies are going to play in, in geospatial is, is to be the ones that take that final step and really solve a lot of end user problems that we haven't necessarily seen before, thought of before. Um, but there's still a role that, that emerging companies that are deeply uh, or sort of at the beginning of the chain in, in the satellite in industry or in the geospatial industry have to play as well. So even new satellite providers such as uh, ISI, Hawkeye 360, even, even to a certain extent, um, uh, Planet still being considered relatively new on the market, these, these guys are highly disruptive and they're bringing in revisit frequencies and, and, and uh, capabilities that are opening up a lot of new use cases. And I think they're also really encouraging traditional players to accelerate on their own plans and, and their own expansion of the constellations. Um, and this acceleration in the availability of data and, and, and the revisit rates uh, is going to help to to power this mass adoption because, of course, then, you know, with, with being able to to monitor the same areas over and over again more frequently and more consistently uh, obviously opens us up to a lot more different use cases. Sean, that's great. And I think that's really clear how you guys are breaking down barriers to entry and increasing uh, people's access to the market. So I think that brings us to the end of our podcast. Sean, would you like to share with our listeners where they can go to learn more about Up42 and how they can reach out? Sure, Lizzie. So the best place is to go to our website, up42.com. There you'll be able to learn about everything that we're doing, uh, what data we have available, what algorithms we have available in our marketplace. Uh, you're able to sign up and get access to free credits to test the platform. Uh, if you're not a developer, we have a very nice uh, user interface that allows you to access data and machine learning without needing to write any code or without having any prior knowledge. Um, if you are a developer, you're welcome to, to look through our documentation. Uh, you can find a lot of open source code on GitHub slash up42. Uh, and uh, alternatively, if you'd like to reach out via email, you can find us on marketing at up42.com. Thank you, Sean, for joining us today. Thank you, Lizzie. It was really great to, to be here, and it's uh, great to have an opportunity to talk more about Up42. So that concludes this edition of We Make It Fly. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and rate us wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on all social media and use the hashtag WeMakeItFly to get in touch with us. We'd love to get your feedback. Thanks for listening.